Amen? Amen. Man alive. I've got also that, I don't know if I'll get to it, that, that uh, Manhattan Declaration. Isn't that the name of it? Man alive. There's a group of Christians, Catholics, Evangelicals, coming together, making declarations. I'm going to read a little of it in a minute if I get to it. What time is it? Uh, what time is the soup going to be ready? <laughs> hey, who said that? Hey, it won't hurt. That's the good thing about soup and stew. It don't hurt if it cooks a little over. It just makes the potatoes softer. Now listen, we're not here to play games, although we have a lot of fun. We're not here just as a little gathering and to pay our duty to God to come together for an hour and a half. We're here, first of all, to give praise to the true and living God, the one God, the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Praise you, Lord. We don't accept Hallelujah. other gods. We don't accept Allah. We don't accept Mohammed. We don't accept Buddha. We don't accept the, all the other gods. We don't even accept rats and monkeys as our God. We accept one God, and His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We need to get solid on that. We need to get strong on that. And when we do, we will get a result in our nation. We don't want to waffle anymore concerning the Word of God. If we got a problem, we got an answer. If we ain't getting the solution, it's because we're not applying ourselves to the Word of God, seeking His face, and being diligent in what we're doing. Oh, I took the fun out. So, let me pose this question. Is God in control? Oh, y'all bit that good. God ain't in control. Ultimately, He has all control. Who, uh, Dennis, who run your business whenever God gave it to you? Who was in control when you give the instructions every day you went out on the job? Under the direction of the master controller. When I say that, I know God's in control, but he's in control to the level he allows himself to be. He chose for his people to be in control of the earth under the direction of the Holy Spirit in line with the covenant and the constitution he gave us to run it. What has happened is we have backed away from our responsibility and we won't run it according to this Constitution. And that's what's happening to the United States of America. We've got misaligned, misdirected leaders that's taking us away from our Constitution so the government's not functioning right. We're going in debt head over heels. The same thing happened to the church because they would not run the church according to the Constitution. They had to be politically correct. We had to sell out <clears throat> to a world system and we're in debt. He said, what's this guy raving about? Did I scare y'all off? <laughs> what, I want, what I mean by control, and, and the reason that most of you say God's in control is because we've not got a revelation of what Jesus did and he was seated at the right hand of the Father, and you've been taught that all your life in churches. You've been taught that God's in control. <clears throat> God is in control to the measure you allow him to be in control of your life. God said, I'm giving the earth to man. If you will apply my principles, listen to me, you will have success. If you turn and get in rebellion and go your own way, you will crater. 
Well, we cratered. So we had to send Jesus in to redeem us back. And we still crater from time to time. But what I'm saying, this revelation that God wants to show you as a church, God wants to take the responsibility off of Him and put it on you. The reason being, He has qualified you and gifted you to do anything. He said, all things are possible to the man who can believe. Well, if that is true, who is in control? Ultimately, God is in control because He established the covenant. He sent the Holy Spirit to make sure it operated in your behalf, but it's only by faith. <clears throat> I know y'all are going to get mad at me before the day is over. I never go through a day. It don't feel right if I don't get somebody stirred up and upset. I want you to think. Think a minute. Don't get all pious and religious on me. God is in control. I've said it many times. We wouldn't have 50 million abortions in a nation. God was in control. We wouldn't have people starving and all the money get blocked up by some demonic activity. It would be flowing across our nation freely. There would be no lack in the nation. If God was in control, you wouldn't be dropping dead at 37 years old with heart attacks and diabetes. If God was in control, we wouldn't be dying early like my 16-year-old son died early of heart disease. We wouldn't have that if God was in control. God is in control to the limit that we will walk by faith and according to the covenant of God. You say, this is radical. Isn't it time that we don't, the next 40 years, the, four, oh, uh, the children can leave. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I forgot. But now let me say something. I'm just trying to stimulate your thinking. I'm trying to stimulate your thinking because we're coming from one season to a new season. It's always hard for mankind to change. God's always wanting us to change. He never changes, but he wants us to change and be more like him on a daily basis. If God was in control, I mean, I've had people tell me, why did he allow that tsunami to come? Hundreds of thousands of people got healed, uh, killed. Well, we just so happened to know when that tsunami hit in Malaysia, that the church of the true living God, I mean, it's the biggest Muslim nation in the world. They was hearing from God Jehovah and the Muslims were hearing from Allah and evidently there was a quiet, uh, Allah wasn't speaking because all the members, they couldn't, they wouldn't allow them to speak down at the regular level at, by the beach or anything. They made them go to a remote mountain place on Christmas Day to hold their special Christmas meeting. The government wouldn't let them meet down in the normal city. So they had to go to a remote mountain area. All the Christians went on Christmas Day. And not one of them perished. Not one died because they was listening to God, the Holy Spirit, Jehovah. And they went and was saved and a couple of hundred thousand Muslims died. You say, did God do that? No, they had an opportunity. They made a choice. God was screaming, come to Christ. Don't go there. Get to protection. Get to the high ground. Don't stay down here. I guarantee you he was screaming. But if you don't have ears to hear, how can you hear? What I'm saying, if God's in control, then whenever we go to India and we speak, why didn't all 1 billion, 200 million rush to the altar and accept Christ? I just want to trigger you thinking a little bit to get you stirred up because if there's a little bit of that old wine skin hanging on you, I want it broken off. You know why? Because from 1963 to 2009, because the church is so... Fluent, and the church 
is presenting a gospel. It's not that the church necessarily lost numbers, but they lost 80% of the teenagers.